changed because I'm filming this literally at 7 o'clock. So, enjoy this setup while it's here because it's probably going to have to change. This video is all about how I plan and organize my life here in Zoom Art School. This is my first year of illustration at Sheridan College. Classes are online, but I am living in residence for reasons. This year I'm balancing schoolwork, obviously freelance illustration projects, as well as my online shop and social media. That's this, by the way. So this is the planning system I've been using all summer and it works for me, but you should definitely experiment and find something that works for you. Disclaimer done. Let's go from long term all the way down to daily. When I have an appointment or an event or when I have to schedule Zoom calls for the authors I'm illustrating for right now for check-ins, that date and time goes right in my phone, which I'm filming on right now. I never used to use the phone calendar, but I really love it now. It gives me a precise time. It gives me reminders. It can be edited easily. I also use my phone calendar to give me um, repeating events every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to remind me to post on Instagram because otherwise I will forget. The light is already changing. Good Lord, why did I decide to film this right now? Next. It's my whiteboard. On my whiteboard, I have my class schedule so I don't forget when I have a class especially when you don't actually have to go to class. It's very easy to forget. This is also where I write down my upcoming assignments. More on that later in the video. Stuck on the whiteboard with magnets, I have a physical monthly calendar. This is one of the printables I designed, which you can find on my Etsy. I'll leave a link to this specific one in the description box, should you wanna look at it. Like I said, I mostly use my phone calendar for the scheduled events, but sometimes they'll go in here if it feels right to me. But what I mostly use it for is content planning. My next video, don't hold me on that, is probably going to be about content batching and repurposing your art. So social media advice for artists. Um, so that's gonna come into play then, but for now, I use my physical calendar to write down what YouTube videos are coming up and what I'm going to be posting on each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So when my phone dings and it's three o'clock and it's time to post something, I look at my calendar and I'm like, oh, that one. Now, enough of this one. I like using a bullet journal better than a pre-printed agenda because it gives me a lot more flexibility if I need to use a spread just for taking notes. That's what I do. And I found a weekly layout that works the best for me. This is my favorite weekly layout. It's a horizontal layout. So I have a big space at the top for weekly to-do lists, tasks, goals, um, and then each day is its own row. And then I split that row into three columns or blocks. So at the top of the week, Maybe I'll use the space at the top to write out some goals for the week, some things I need to remember to do. And then I go through the week and I assign tasks that I wanna get done each day. Also, while I'm setting up my week, I look at my phone calendar. Do I have anything coming up? I write it down in the day, so when it's the day, I look at it and it's there. I also look at my um, physical calendar so I know what content I'm posting that day. Ooh, the sun be going down. The sun's almost gone. I'm probably gonna have to, let me try and wrap up this block and then we're gonna relocate. So as the week goes on, I might have to refine my task list for the day and that's what the second block is for. So in the second block, I'll say, actually no, move this to this, move this to this, and I write a new task list for the day. And then the day comes and it's the top of the day. And I'm looking at a crossed out, scribbled in mess and I go, well, that doesn't make me feel very organized for the day. No, of course it doesn't. So that's what the third block is for. Third block is for at the top of the day, you remind yourself right down, I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do this and that's daily planning. And that's how I go from long-term planning to like monthly and then weekly and then daily. You gotta you got keep shifting things over so you can make sure that nothing gets lost in the cracks. 
Also, really quick, um, if you're the kind of person that big to-do lists are overwhelming to you, definitely try just doing the top three priorities for the day. I do that too sometimes when I'm feeling overwhelmed. I gotta go um, change my location because the sun's down. Bye, sun. It's nice to have you here. So as you probably know, iOS 14 came out and considering this is a video about my planning system, my productivity system, um, I wanted to flex my iOS 14 home pages real quick because I tried to set them up in a way that would be most conducive to productivity. So let's start over here. I have my weather widget right there because I, that's literally my favorite thing about this new <laughs> this new setup is that I can just swipe and there's the weather um, and then all this stuff not really that important oops so this is my landing page uh, yes I have pictures with my boyfriend all over my phone because it motivates me to work harder and um, I like looking at him so on my landing page I have the monthly calendar as well as just the date and sundown time slash sunrise time. Um, all these widgets as you can see are done with Widgetsmith. Um, I set it up with just these apps to be the landing page and then over here um, right at the top I have my kind of five focuses I guess you could call it. Um, so these are the five things, they're almost like mantras where this is what I'm trying to implement. So I want to be a, more of a doer, not a planner, a doer. Just do it, you know, Nike mentality. Um, keep a positive mindset. Don't get negative because when I have a negative mindset about a task, I won't do it. Don't neglect self-care. I say as I am currently neglecting my self-care or working on it. Um, avoid busy. Um, that's just me trying to remind myself not to be in a constant state of work constant state of being overwhelmed, you know, try and just work steadily at things without going under. And then just a reminder that I'm doing what I love. I'm in the program of my dreams. I get to work on art every day. This is what I love doing. I have my bank app and then also you can see I have a link to a Google Forms. Um, this is how I track my expenses and my income. So I'll put in the date, the description, the category, and then the amount and then from there it gets put into a google sheets automatically which is so cool and then on this page also social apps but more social messaging apps and then this is the page that i have all my family photos on pretty self-explanatory and then this page this page is this is where we get into the good stuff this page i love so i have this photo that i screenshotted off of pinterest as you can see from the icon in the corner that says get up clear your desk tie your hair and just start again going along with my goal to become more of a doer just start it just do it i have the moon phase widget um which is very nice for the autumn spooky season the date and then i have all these shortcuts i've set up so let me show you them um, i have invert on which takes me to the shortcut and it inverts my colors so that is good for when i need to start working and i don't want to get distracted by my apps turn invert on and then when i'm done invert off what i've also done is i've set up the triple click the home button and that turns it into grayscale i honestly kind of prefer that but i like the shortcuts and then i have a shortcut to just set a 10 minute timer and then just a generic timer to so i can set how much time i want the timer on if i want to work for 45 minutes or whatever this page will make more sense when we get into the next section where i talk about my ideal day setups but i kind of have a condensed list of my ideal day so now i don't have to go into the spreadsheet necessarily to see it i can just have it on my home screen this is a widget from the reminders app by the way and then my screen time which is really high right now but that's because i stayed up past 12 last night so yeah i love the new update like i'm actually really really love the update and i really enjoy playing around with it i love how it makes my phone nice to look at and i can set it up in a way that motivates me to work so yeah oh, it's so boring though i need to decorate that wall oh 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 okay um
my pop socket came off. With this new layout, we come to part two of this video where I'm talking about my routines. Habit tracking, time blocking, hardcore scheduling like that. I can't keep up with it. It doesn't work for me, at least right now. Not really. Especially since I'm in school and I have different class schedules every day, how am I supposed to keep a consistent routine? And I'm not the kind of person where I wake up ready to do the same thing in the same order every morning. Morning routines, it's, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. I always really liked the idea of the ideal day schedules because it's not saying you're gonna do all these things every day. It's saying in the perfect day, these are the things I do and these are in the order I do them in. So I created two two variations of my ideal day schedules that I could modify depending on my schedule and depending on what kind of mood I wake up in. And here they are. The first routine, I call it the ready to go routine. This is especially if I'm in the middle of a project that I left on last night and I wake up and I'm ready to go, I'm not gonna spend an hour in the morning working out and then doing all my self care and then showering, going on a walk, fresh air. Like I'm not gonna do all that in the morning. It's not gonna happen. If I wake up in a productive mood, ready to do things, I'm not going to not do the things I need to do. You know what I mean? I don't wanna waste any time. When I wake up in that kind of mood, I get up, you know, I get like ready, I eat breakfast and then I get to work. So let's go through it. I wanna get out of bed no matter what. I get dressed um, in the morning, probably just something really comfy, just so I can say I got out of my PJs. Breakfast, um, get water to have next to me while I work. And what I do when I'm ready to shift into work mode is I put my phone in black and white. Suddenly your notifications aren't that compelling and your apps don't look that clickable anymore. If you, need, if you seriously need to get work done, put your phone in black and white. And then top of the day, like I said, I go through, I make my daily to-do list, and then I get to work immediately, work block. And my what I like to do is my first work block of the day, I use, I use it on a hard hitting task, maybe schoolwork, something I don't really wanna do, do it in the morning. Whenever you take a break, make sure you're leaving your workspace in a state that is easy to come back to. Keep asking yourself, can I? Can this wait? Can I wait to check this? Can I wait to watch this video until lunch? Can I wait to do this until my next break? Don't interrupt the flow if you don't have to. I like to keep a list next to me for a for later list. So I think like, oh dang, I need to register my Presto card. I need to do that. I need to remember to do that. Instead of stopping to do that now and to take the stress of you having to remember to do it later out of your brain, you just write it down and it's a for later list. And I have here, if I really, really need a break, take the break, just don't use your phone. So then that'll force me to go get a snack, refill water, do some stretching, anything but check my phone because that's just a trap. And then we have pre-lunch. So this is when I do some of my more like self-care things. I want to stretch, work out. I want to do either stretching or exercise every day very doable because if i if i'm like i don't want to work out at least stretch and then i still did something good for myself and then you have lunch and on lunch i let myself go on my phone obviously it's a break it's a break then two habits i'm trying to get into are the 10 minute tidy um which basically the theory is that if you just set your timer for 10 minutes you're probably gonna end up cleaning everything you have to do and if you do that every day you won't have dishes piling up. Sketchbook time. I have down 10 to 15 minutes, but honestly, I'm trying to make it longer, but I would rather do 10 minutes every day than an hour once a week. Then I have a second work block. This work block, like it's later in the day, so I know it's gonna be harder to get back into it. This is where it's very important to put my phone on black and white and just do it, work for like three hours. But since I know it's gonna be harder for me to get into it, that's why I did the thing I don't really wanna do first. So now I have like an, a video to film or um, work on those freelance illustration projects. I'm illustrating some children's books. I would do that now. 
then wind down, empty your water. I'm so bad at doing that. I'm so bad. I So then I just have musty water bottles. Empty the water, review your plans for tomorrow morning so you wake up knowing that there's things that need to get done. Um, and then make sure your workspace is tidy and set up so in the morning you can just jump right back into it. And then after dinner, if I need to keep working, I will. Um, but if not, if I did those two work blocks properly, probably won't have anything else to do that day. So I can go, I can have a nice night, FaceTime the boyfriend, go out with some friends. Now, if I had it my way, every, every day would be like that for me. I would wake up ready to go every day and I'd get all my hard hitting tasks done first thing in the morning and you know maybe with time I could train myself to be that bitch but I'm not that bitch right now. So my second routine is called the waffling around routine. There are some mornings where I don't want to do the work I have to do. I would always be really hard on myself and I would be like no you can't do anything else you can't do anything you find fun. You can't do any, blah, blah, you can't do anything. You need to do this. You need to do this task that you need to do. Was I right? Yeah. But then what I do then is mentally, I don't allow myself to do anything fun or self care, but I'm not doing the thing I have to do. So what do I do instead? Nothing, which is basically wasting time, which is scrolling on social media. Like I won't let myself watch like the episode of the TV show I love for 30 minutes, but I will scroll on social media for an hour and a half. Why does that, why do I work like that? Why, why, why? But I realized that about myself, so I developed this second routine for when I wake up and I don't wanna do anything. I don't wanna do the task I, I need to do. And I try to change my mindset, doesn't work. I know, if I leave myself to my own devices, the morning will be wasted. So what do I do? I get up and I do all the list of like little habits and things I wanna build in the day. I do that first. I, I do not even let social media be an option in my head. Like those are the two options. This is a little something I like to call strategic procrastination. I get up right first thing in the morning, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna work out. I never feel more motivated to work out than when I'm procrastinating doing something else. Get up, we stretch, we work out, we shower, do your self care, everything, morning, done. Then get dressed, make the bed, all these little things, getting done, have breakfast, then get my water, put my phone in black and white to make sure your little doesn't go on TikTok. Then what do we do? 10 minute tidy, because we still don't, we still don't wanna do that. We still don't wanna do that thing. 10 minute tidy, because we're in our productive mood. We just don't wanna do that, but we're in our productive mood. So we're gonna tidy, I'm gonna do the dishes, make my bed, put my clothes away, do some vacuuming. When more, when do you feel more motivated to clean than when you're not doing something else? Ask not what you can do for your procrastination, but what your procrastination can do for you. After the 10 minute tidy, am I ready to work yet? No, sketchbook time. I need to do sketchbook work for my classes. So like it's technically school work. You build up so much momentum from completing all these little things. You feel great. You feel moisturized. You feel like that post-workout feel. You feel great. So then you know what you're gonna do? You are gonna do that task and you're gonna do it before lunch and then it's gonna be done. And then how are you gonna motivate yourself to keep working? Almost lunch, almost lunch, almost lunch. And then it's lunch and you can go on your phone. You can do whatever you want. And then after lunch, you do fun work, some drawing, some stuff that you do wanna do. And then you wind down, empty your water bottle, plan for tomorrow, clean up your workspace and your day wasn't a total bust. You didn't spend it being a potato. I use it as a tool to build healthy habits because as you can probably tell, I neglect my self care first before literally anything else. So I'm trying to build some healthy habits here. We now switch to phase three of this video and that's all about staying on top of projects. 
Like I said, I also I did an art fundamentals course last year here at Sheridan, so that was kind of my intro to this year. Like most of you, and like every single year in my educational career, last year I struggled with procrastination. Let's hear it for procrastination. And will I struggle with procrastinating on assignments this year? I mean, probably, dude. Like, probably. But here's what I'm doing to try and stay on top of things this year. I go to class, teacher gives an assignment. That assignment, on the whiteboard, immediately immediately because especially these like little assignments that are like due the next week you're gonna forget you're gonna forget you're gonna check slate the night before and you're gonna look here's the thing to so drop in your thing you're like oh 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 obviously you're gonna forget so i immediately on the whiteboard i write down the course i write down the name of the project i write down the due date so at the very least i will not forget that i need to do it art students tend to get like open-ended assignments like creative assignments and what i found last year is while the teacher is explaining the assignment to you that is when the neurons are firing like that is when you come up with literally all your ideas while the teacher is reading off of the rubric is when you're like like you cannot get enough ideas while the teacher is reading out the assignment for the first time. That is the peak, that is the peak. You were not gonna reach that peak again. So as soon as class finishes, or more often as it's finishing, I am writing down my ideas. I am doing all my thumbnails. I am doing some sketches. I am, everything I have, I put it down in the sketchbook because chances are you're gonna close the sketchbook and you're gonna close your laptop and you're not gonna look at that assignment for two to three days. So a couple days later when you do start it, you have a jumping off point. You're not reading the assignment like, what am I even gonna do for this? Cause you had the ideas, you just forgot them. And this is good practice, even for projects that are not open-ended and creative and require lots of brainstorming. As soon as you get it, just that day, right after, however long, do the first steps, do the planning. So that way in the week when you need to come back and actually do it, it's not like you're starting from scratch. So for long form assignments, assignments that are gonna take multiple weeks, usually in the weeks, the weekly notes section of my bullet journal, I'll write down the assignment and then I'll break it down into steps. So the project is due in three weeks. I wanna get this done by Thursday, I wanna get this done by next week and I wanna get this done like five days before it's due, for example. This is good so you don't lose your sense of scale of the assignment, because you keep if you think of it as one entity, you just think like, oh yeah, I need to work on that. Oh yeah, I need to do that tomorrow. And then you sit down to do it and you realize it's gonna take you six more hours than you thought it was gonna do. I'm not talking from personal experience, not at all. And to wrap things up, here is the biggest thing I learned as an art student. It sounds obvious, but if in your head you don't want to do something, you're going to procrastinate. Listen to me. Hey, hey, hey. Listen to me. You have to change your mindset. You have to. Whether you need to visualize how nice it's going to be when the project is done, or you're thinking about how you're going to reward yourself, or my favorite, or my favorite method, the reality check. I started saying to myself last year, whenever I didn't want to do a project, I just thought to myself, you could be doing math right now. Do you realize that? You could be doing math right now. You go to art school. You get to do your favorite subject every day. That's all your pro except electives. <sighs> every day. This is what you love doing. So even the project that you don't really want to do, is better than doing trigonometry. Your displeasure and your not wanting to do tasks scales to fit whatever tasks you are assigned. It'll find the thing in the list that you like to do the least, no matter how great the list is, and you will procrastinate it. Change your mindset. Change your mindset. I hope this was helpful to somebody. Sorry for the lighting changes. I am getting lights, I am getting a new camera, and I'm getting a new microphone. So the quality of my videos will be improving. 
very soon. Also, thank you for being patient while I was moving in. I missed a couple uploads. I'm very sorry. If you want to see all the art I make, you can follow my Instagram, boop, and link in the bio. Also in my bio, I have links to my online store where you can see my printables and my postcards and stickers, which are right up there with baby Groot. Boop, boop. This is a lazy outro, but like, you know what to do. If you liked it, you should like it. And if you like me, then you should subscribe. And I can't wait for you guys to see all the videos I am going to make coming up next. I love you. Bye.